I'm Clara Liu. I'm a visual artist and I want you to come along with me as I travel to draw and paint the world. Traveling in Portugal, I was not prepared for how significant and luscious the botanicals were throughout the city, the countryside, and even architectural sites. This botanical garden in Lisbon was no exception. The palm trees were absurdly tall. Oftentimes, before I even start a painting, I like to ask myself, what are some techniques that I want to use to really get the effect that I'm looking for? I knew I really wanted to use atmospheric perspective because if I painted every single aloe leaf to the same degree of darkness and detail, probably the aloe plant would not look very dimensional. I would guess it would end up being very flat. These aloe plants, they really were trays. There are a bunch of them. They had to have been at least three feet taller than me. I've never seen aloe plants that grew to be that tall that had just this cascade of dried gray aloe leaves. It was such a strange combination because the upper part of the aloe plant was very green and very plump. You move downwards and all of a sudden the aloe leaves are so spiky. Their forms change because they're dried. They have gestures to them. I'm not that picky about palettes. The most important thing about this palette is that it has a cover so that I can squirt paints out in advance or while I'm painting, I can close the cover and I can still come back to that. These aloe trees really felt like they were in a group, like I was seeing a family. There were the gigantic overbearing ones. There were these little baby ones on the side. I'd never really seen aloe in that format before. Watercolor is all about layering, and I pretty much know if I put down a very, very light sketch in watercolor, there's no chance that's not going to get covered by something else at some point. Sketching in watercolor from the very beginning, I'm thinking in terms of watercolor. My mind is already there. Whereas if I start my sketch with pencil, then I have to transition to watercolor, and I oftentimes think about this initial sketch as a warm-up for me to get into the mood to work with the watercolor. While I do oftentimes have squirts of watercolor in my palette that do dry out, I do really like the option of squirting out a nice fresh blob of watercolor paint. And that provides this opportunity for me to interact with the watercolor pigment in a much more fast, significant way. If I'm scrubbing from a dried blob of watercolor paint, I've always thought about tiles as an accessory to the architecture, but in Portugal, the tiles are it. They're all over the place. They even have an Azulejos museum. They really are proud of this. They say, okay, this is a national art form we can all get behind. This is ours. The perspective in this room makes me dizzy. It's very wrong. This wall is supposed to go out that way, but the railing in the window is going out that way. There's like 18 vanishing points. I think they're being lazy. They're like, I don't want to bother with measuring out the linear perspective, so whatever. I don't think they're being lazy. I just don't think they know. Come on, didn't they have linear perspective by then? Linear perspective came around the Renaissance. Yeah, but this is Portugal. Renaissance is Italy. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny about the tile museum is that most of the historical tiles there are pretty much all blue and yellow. It could be the local materials. Maybe there is some product in Portugal that can be produced in large quantities that is best for use of tiles, and it happens to be blue and yellow. Well, some of the tiles just blend in, and then some of them are really attention-seeking. They're like, look at me! I'm a huge wall of patterns! Is it a man? It's a horse! <laughs> I love going to an artist studio because it's like so inspiring. Like seeing your work makes me want to get up and make work. Yeah, like... <laughs> it's like awesome. Oh my god. It <gasps> it's incredible. Yeah, that, those are little bits of a uh, oh. linoleum that don't get quite carved right, you know? Yeah the yellowish tint of the paper. Right. It looks it would look too stark if it was yeah. like a 
just white paper. It took me ages to find the right paper. High content of cotton, it gets the ink gets absorbed and it doesn't shine uh, as it would. Yeah. Yeah. Little objects. Whoa. This is my Why? pride and joy. <gasps> oh my god, it's so it's big! Really, this is like a weapon. It's like a weapon, yeah. You yeah. could like hurt somebody. Really <laughs> Where did you get it? Uh, at an art shop, it was on discount. I waited for the discount to come. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't have the muscle strength. <laughs> yeah. No, you, you hold it like this. You can oh. hold it that way. Oh. So and then, then you can put even more strength like with your hand on top of this. I see. And then you can okay. lift it up this way and then you turn it around and it just sits on these little things. I take when I go oh. uh, to the... Your travel bag. Yeah. This is the ink. The ink. Yes. The ink. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, to clean the ink. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Is that vegetable oil? It's vegetable oil, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Then uh, this is a uh, spray the ink. Mm. Yes. When did you start doing printmaking? I think in 2017. That's it? 16, 17. You haven't been doing it that long. No. This is a. Uh, I think this was my first one uh, o'clock print. And then like it got a bit more, like uh, I was able to get much more detail into it, like mm -hmm. this is a couple and Then I also, I framed the actual lino uh, and gave it to her as well. Years after. Oh yeah, you can really see the difference. Yeah. There's a lot of subtlety in the shadows Yeah. Now. Well, there's also more lines yeah. than the other ones. Like just the quantity is increasing. Yeah. Then I, like, I, re I figured out I could get much more uh, incisive with the with the tools. Extraordinary. I mean, the print looks amazing. Yeah, the print looks better. The print really does look better. Yeah. In terms of composition, I really wanted to make sure that I included two aloe trees. The majestic one was the one I was really after, but I really felt like depth-wise, it would be a lot better to have one of the aloe trees in front or behind. So I just chose in the lower right-hand corner to depict a couple of the plump leaves from another aloe plant. I wouldn't include all of it. So that way the main emphasis was still on the really tall one. I was thinking in terms of composition to make it look like it was shooting up into the upper left-hand corner, get some of that diagonal action in there. Nowhere but in watercolor are you gonna find this freshness that is inherent to the brushstroke, the spontaneity that happens with the flow of the medium. The thing is, the window for capturing and retaining that freshness, it's a really small window. You only have so long to work the piece before it quickly becomes really heavy-handed, overworked, and muddy. I confess that I'm really not that intentional when it comes to color mixing with watercolor. I tend to have tons and tons of colors, which is funny because with oil painting, I try to really limit the number of colors I have. In watercolor, it gives me a little more flexibility, especially when I'm painting on site. I don't like to spend a lot of time really getting involved with mixing specific colors. Most of the time when I pick up a color off my palette, I have no idea <laughs> what that color looks like until it actually gets on the page. It really is not precise and is largely an approximation most of the time. I only use two brushes. I use a water brush, super convenient because it has a little compartment in the back where you can fill it with water. I don't have to actually carry a cup of water with me. All I do is I squeeze the back of the water brush and that then pushes the water into the bristles of the brush. The thing is a lot of the water brushes, they don't come in very big sizes. So I always have a Sumi brush when I really want to throw down a really big juicy blob of paint. Sumi brushes tend to be a lot tougher to control than say a traditional watercolor brush. They're really big and plump. The bristles are extremely fine and they go all over the place. They're tougher to control. But I like that. I like that spontaneity because it forces me to run with the marks my brush is making as opposed to trying to control every single step of the way. What a lot of people don't realize is that it's okay to go back to your hotel after you've done the painting and work on it some more. 